last thing we wanted to do in this part was to handle the edges of the screen. Because right now, you notice I can walk right off the edge of the screen. Okay? On both sides. There's nothing to stop me from getting way off the side. And the player in your game, um, if he ends up off the side, he may get lost because he's not going to see the scene view down here. He's only going to see basically what's up here in the game view in the finished version of the game. So we want to make sure that we either stop the movement like right along the edge here or that when he goes off one side, he comes back in on the other for wrapping. So uh, one other thing as you're testing this that we might not have mentioned is in your game view, you've got this uh, drop-down menu that's right here. Uh, make sure when you're playing in this that you're actually looking at it in the resolution of your finished game. So I'm using the standalone 1024 by 768. This is one that's already in Unity. Make sure if you haven't done that already that you have selected that. You might be in free aspect. In free aspect, the size of your camera will match the size of your window that you're displaying in. See how this is a big long rectangle? And if I change the size up here, it changes the shape down there. We don't want that. We want a fixed size for our game window so we can actually see where the real edges of the screen are. So we're going to run that in standalone, which locks that in. That'll keep that aspect ratio, um, and we'll be good. All right, so blocking uh, at the edges of the screen is where we'll start. So what we want to do, got to define our problem here. So my my player as he's moving when he gets to the edge we want him to stop okay now there's uh, there's a couple of different ways we could do this we could um, drop in an object along the edge of the screen that would just be something you can't pass through but we haven't talked about how to do collisions and colliders and all that yet or what we can do is we can actually just use some code here to figure out where he's almost hitting the edge so right here he's almost to the very edge and what I can do is I can look at the coordinate up here in his X position so at a negative 19 he's right there at a 19.5 he's starting to go off the edge so it looked like about a 19.3 was a good setting here so what I can do is I can actually use this number and I can test to see if he's gotten to this part on the X yet to, to 19 negative 19.3 now since our camera is centered right in the middle, 0 and 0 on the X and the Y, I know that if he's a negative 19.3 here, that if I take him over to this side, he should be at a negative or a positive 19.3 roughly when he's ready to go off of this side because this is symmetrical. Okay, So that is um, our numbers right on the left side. It's negative 19.3 and the right side is positive 19.3. So how can I write some code that will check his X coordinate every frame and test to see if he's gotten either past a negative 19.3 here or past a positive 19.3 on this side and then keep him constrained to the screen. That's what we're going to do next. So after we move our player, so we've got input from the keyboard, we've moved the player, after we move the player, we want to check to see if the player has left the edge of the screen. Okay? We're going to check that. If he has, then what we want to do is move the player back to the edge of the screen. Okay, so if he starts going off the edge, we want to push him back so that he's at the edge of the screen. Okay, so this is where we use one of those conditional statements. Uh, we say if, and we give a condition here, and the condition is going to be if the players, let's go back out to Unity, if the player's x, we'll do the left side first here, if the player's x coordinate gets to be less than a negative 19.3, so if he goes past this line here, this imaginary line we're drawing in our code, then we want to move him back to a 19.3. So we have to ask if his X position gets a less than a 19.3. So how do we get his X position? How do we get this number out of the box in our code? That's the next thing we're going to do here. So the condition is going to be getting his X coordinate. So to get the coordinate uh, from the player, the coordinate is in the transform. Okay. So I need to go to the player's transform. 
inside the transform I've got the position so I'm gonna go transform then the position position has three different pieces X Y and Z I want the X so I need to go to the transform position X to get this number so in my code I would type that like this I would say transform which says go to the transform component of this object that this script's attached to our player. I say dot, dot here, uh, this is called dot notation, and the dot means go inside of this. So the transform had the position, rotation, and scale inside of it. So I'm telling it I want the position, all right? And then the position has three pieces. It had an X, a Y, and a Z. I want the X. So this is going to get me the current position that the player is at. So as he's moving back and forth and update every frame after I move him, I'm going to get his position, his new position on the X. I'm then going to check to see if that is a less than a negative 19.3. And then to move the player back to the edge of the screen, we have to assign it a new position. So in C sharp, what we have to do is actually um, define a whole new vector three, a whole new uh, set of coordinates for the player. So we would just say transform dot position. Transform dot position is a vector three, so we're going to set that equal to a new. So we're creating a brand new vector three. Uh, um, whoops, it went to vector two. So we're establishing a whole new vector three. And then a vector three, remember how I showed you up here, um, is this an x, y, z coordinate? So we need to feed in the coordinate on the x where we want the player to be. That's the edge of the screen here because they just hit the edge. We're going to move it back to the edge. So we're going to put our negative 19.3. Um, we got to put an f here because these are float numbers. We also probably need to put an f right here because that's going to be a float number. So the computer knows to format that as float. Then a comma. Now we have to give it the y value. Well, the y value of our player, um, we could look it up in the uh, inspector, or we could just find out what it currently is and feed it back in. So we could just say position, uh, P-O-S-I-T-L-N, position, uh, sorry. We would have to say transform first, because we're going into the transform, position, dot y that will give me the current position on the y so we don't want to change that so let's keep that the same so this will just keep the same one that we currently have we are going to change the x and then on the z in our 2d game here we're just keeping that zero so we can just put a zero in there okay so this would make a brand new vector three a vector three is an x y z coordinate in this case so we're going to go to 19 negative 19.3 on the x Whatever the Y currently is, we're going to read that and put it right back in there. And then zero on the Y. Put a semicolon there. We'll hit save. And when I test this now, I should not be able to walk off the left edge of the screen with the player. So let's hit play. Okay, I'm moving to the left here. And when I go back over and hit the edge, I'm still holding down on the uh, left directional arrow there. And nothing's happening. So that did block me from the side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make it work on the other side. So like I was showing you, the, the, the coordinate over here would be x at 19.3. So we are going to uh, do the same kind of thing here. So trans, oh, we got to do another check, right? So now, um, if, if we went off the left side, we did this. So what we're going to do here, let's take this line out. What we're going to do to block on the uh, right side is another if statement. So we're going to check again, is the transform dot position of our player on the X, is it greater than a positive 19.3? If it is, then I know he's gotten off uh, the right side of the screen and I need to move him back just like I did up here matter of fact I can just copy this line right here copy and paste and this time instead of setting him to a 19.3 I want to put him back to this positive 19.3 same y position he's currently at and zero on the z so this will now block him on the right side so uh, let's make a note here this is um, check for 
the left side of the screen. And this one here is going to be check for the right side of the screen. Okay, so now we're going to have him uh, block. Let's actually, I can copy this comment down here too. Why not? just so that we can see that we are moving them back to the edge of the screen here again. And if I go in and test it now, we'll see that I can't go off the, the left, but if I go over to the right, I also cannot get off the right side. Okay, so now I've got my guy blocked in. He can no longer leave the edges of the screen. And I'm doing that just by every frame after I move him. I'm checking his X coordinate. And if it gets lower than that negative 19.3 uh, or greater than that negative or that positive 19.3, then I'm just making his position move back to, to that line in the, in the code that I drew here. Okay? So there we go. That's screen blocking. Now, the other thing I said we would look at is how to do what's called screen wrapping. So um, this would be for blocking. So let's actually put an a little comment here. So this is, whoops, screen blocking is what I would call this, blocking at the edge of the screen. Let's look now at how we can do what's called screen wrapping. Where we're going to go from one side of the screen to the other. And it's almost exactly the same as what's here. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to copy all of this code here for the blocking and I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to then comment out so let's do a block comment uh, forward slash star to start the block comment let's star forward slash to uncomment this so this made a comment out of all this stuff here which was for the blocking so the computer will ignore it because we can't really have both of these going at the same time we'll never get to the wrapping point if we're blocking so in screen wrapping, I'm still checking the position on both sides, but the position I want now is when the player gets off the edge of the screen. So as soon as I can no longer see him, so I'm going to push him. He's at about a negative 20.7. Um, let's let him get to maybe a negative 21. So when he gets to a negative 21, he's here off the side of the screen. Then what I want him to do is teleport. I'm going to move him over here to a positive 21, and then he'll roll back on. Okay, so we're going to we're going to change his position. We're just going to make him jump and then come back in. Okay, so we saw that was about a negative 21. So in my code here, I'm going to change this to see when his x gets uh, lower than a smaller than a negative 21. Then I want to move him to a positive 21. That'll move him from the left side. He's off the left side. This will move him instantly over to the right side of the screen. Same thing here. If he gets bigger than a positive 21, then I want to move him to a negative 21. So this will, he'll, he's off the edge of the screen on the right. I'm going to pop him over to the left side. Okay. So let's take a look and see how that works. So this is now going to be screen wrapping and it's the same idea, just slightly different. So when I go off all the way, see I'm almost off. There, see how I popped over in the scene view here? My player is now over here, and here he comes back onto the screen. Okay, if I go off this side, he's going to pop in over there. So this looks pretty seamless here, really, because as you pop him back and forth, he's just going to keep coming around. So you could have this kind of an idea here. So screen wrapping and screen blocking, those are both options. Um, you can choose which one you want to use. Whichever one you want to use, type that code in. If you want to have both examples in your script, that's perfectly fine. You can just comment out the one that you don't want. Okay. I'm actually going to uh, comment out the wrapping. I'm going to keep blocking, so I'm going to just block comment out my uh, screen wrapping code here. And I'm going to bring back my screen blocking. So I've got this code active now and this code inactive, but now you have it both ways. And if you wanted to get a little fancier in the future, you could set some options where maybe you allow the player to pick. Do they want screen wrapping or screen blocking? You could, uh, you could find a way to make it so uh, 
based on their choice, one or the other of these would be turned off and the other one turned on. Okay, so I think we've accomplished everything we wanted to in this video on player movement. We now have the ability to uh, move the player based off of input from the keyboard. Uh, we have control of his speed and we're either blocking him at the edges of the screen like I am right now or we're allowing him to wrap around. Alright, so thanks for watching and uh, in the next video we'll start working on setting up and getting some movement going on our falling objects.